What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Team Building Podcast, where you learn how to build a dominant real estate team in your market. We're doing one of the last episodes of 2008, and I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, Jeff Cohn. It's just you and me. Just you and me, Jeff. What's up? Here we go, man. Well, hey, let's flash forward 10 years. I think you said 2008. At least that's what I heard on my end. We'll call it 2018. <laughs> Freudian slip? I don't know. Uh, all right. So 2018. Yes. Uh, so one of the big milestones is that you are taking over as kind of the official host. So I won't be there on all the episodes. We'll still do a couple of like just you and me episodes a month and talk about like go super deep on topics that are relevant that you're coaching on that you're seeing come up with clients and stuff like that. But then you're going to be doing the interviews and God help us all. Because <laughs> it's gonna be <laughs> it's going to be you and the guest one-on-one -on -one, grilling them, grilling them about their stats, their team that, and all that fun stuff. So, you know, so man, it's funny, you know, our, a lot of our audience, yeah, that's, and it's a fun announcement. I'm excited. 2019, baby, here I come. I'll be hosting all these podcasts, but Matt is going to come in often. Uh, we're going to bring you episodes where it's just he and I going back and forth. And that was because of you at the audience. So a lot of people had reached out to me privately and said they love the episodes where we don't have a guest and Matt and I can just really go deep into different topics. And I think the thing that makes us unique compared to a lot of other podcasts that are out there is we're still running a team. We're still running Omaha's lead. I have 40 agents. We'll sell 650 houses this year. And so a lot of people want to hear from me as to what my answers are. And sometimes as you guys have probably noticed, I have to sit back and not talk as much as I want to talk and allow ourselves to interview the guests that we have. So when it's just Matt, I get to talk more about myself. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm sitting back and laughing because I don't know that anybody in the audience feels like you don't talk as much as you want to. Oh, I, well, now you know. The cat's <laughs> out of the bag. I want to talk way more, <laughs> but I have to sit back and not talk. So right. my biggest thing was as, as I led up to, you know, when we first launched in 2015, I had listened to so many podcasts, thousands of episodes, and I was always frustrated because I felt like the person doing the interview with team leaders was never asking the questions I had. I felt like they were asking really vanilla questions. And what I learned was it's because of the, they asked questions based on their experience and their perspective. And they didn't right. have the same experience and perspective I had. And I think that's why our team building podcast has gotten so much traction. And we have so many amazing mm -hmm. audience members that are continuing to listen to our show. So today we have a fun topic, which mm -hmm. leads right into 2009. <laughs> Thank you for that. Goal setting for 2009. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. All right. So, so you've been through a few things, right? Career visioning and like doing your own goal setting with, uh, with M1, like your mastermind group and all kinds of stuff. So let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, man. So like M1 um, just invited me to be a master mentor within their program. They have over 500 aspiring millionaires. It's an entrepreneurial group. You can find out more information online or on Facebook. Just search literally the letter M and the number one. Uh, great organization led by Rock Thomas. He invited me to get on his Wake Up With Rock episode last week to talk about an upcoming event we're hosting for them in Omaha in May of next year, 2019. And um, the big focus with the group is just helping people break through barriers, set goals, time block, you know, know that life is more than just money. It's more about living a balanced lifestyle. So career visioning was kind of the topic that I focused on. And that's been a huge focus point for us with Omaha's Elite as we've continued to grow out. We're growing people. We're not just growing a sales organization. And so that's where I wanted to spend 10 or 15 minutes, Matt, with you today, because this is such a great time coming around, you know, with New Year's just around the corner. A lot of leaders don't know how to lead per se when it comes to goal setting. Should they mm -hmm. set goals based on where they want to see their people go? Or should they set goals based on where their people want to go and have their people even defined where they want to end up by the end of 2019. Most people simply haven't even thought about it. Yeah. So the first point with career visioning for us is creating a vision board for each and every agent and staff member on the team. So having that vision of what do they want to accomplish in 12 months and have some items that they want to accomplish over the next five years and then have specific activities of what they would have to do on the day to day, week to week, month to month basis to be able to achieve each of those items. And then as a team, we celebrate their successes. And so we console them when there's failure, but we celebrate any time that there's a success so that they can see every week at our team accountability meeting that people are actually realizing their dreams and that our team now has become the vehicle to allow them to realize the dream. At the end of the day, we're just a real estate company. You could go work at Taco Bell. You could go work at a Fortune 500 company. It doesn't matter where you are. The goal of where you are should be that it's going to make it easier. You'll be able to accomplish your dreams faster with less energy. Um, and be able to essentially get to where you want to go. And, and for us, we chose residential real estate as the space to help us generate the wealth and income to be able to live and lead the life of our dreams. Yeah. So speaking of goals and celebrating success, one of the most powerful things that my business coach ever told me is that 
for almost all of us and for human beings in general, and maybe a little bit less with uber successful people, but definitely with the average person, this applies to all of the agents that are on our teams. Their emotions are not naturally hardwired to be successful, right? You, you mentioned consoling each other when we fail. There's way more of that than there is celebrating success when we succeed, right? Success ends up getting very lonely because you start to surpass the other agents. And in most offices, that's a bad thing. You start to lose your friends yep. yeah, because a, a leadership of that office has not created an environment that supports, especially runaway success, right? Maybe, you know, eh, if you're doing you know, 10% better than somebody else, they're okay. Once you start doing 50% better, you start to get a little bit of pushback. People get worried. The leader of the organization. Thinks, no, that's that's uh -oh. another story. Yeah, exactly. Right? But that's but, true. Yeah, but we as leaders have to recognize that the, the emotions of our people are not hard, hardwired for success. So we have to come in over the top and yes, be supportive when there's failure, but most importantly, pick them up emotionally and motivationally and get them back towards the path to success. And then when they do succeed, like go over the top and celebrating it because a lot of us are bad at celebrating success. Yep. So I just wanted to point that out real quick. So I love that you guys intentionally do that and that you intentionally focus on the activities because you know from tracking exactly what needs to be done. And so you're yes. breaking that down. Let me break it down real quick. So everyone talks about, you talk about reverse engineering. Essentially, we know on our team, it takes somebody 36 transactions to make $100,000. So let's say someone comes to you, they do their vision board, they self-reflect, um, they self-actualize, and they say, here's the life I want to live. I believe in the next 12 months, if I make six figures, I'll be able to get there. Or over the next five years, if I can maintain $100,000 a year, I'll be able to get there. Well, now it's my job and my responsibility. The onus is on Omaha's Elite Real Estate Group to deliver them the vehicle to be able to generate a six-figure income. And we know it takes around, on average, 36 transactions. So the average person would say, okay, take 36 divided by 12 months. Well, we know that the months aren't equal. So we take last year's numbers and we say in January, 12% of the homes sold. But in May, 30% of the homes may have sold. So we take their 36 and then we do a bell curve based on when their sales and or our team's average sales took place the year before. And then we're also, to your point, Matt, cognizant of where their deals came from the year before. So if they've never sold real estate or they just joined our team, their goal should be that a third of their deals come from leads we give them, internet leads, a third for, should be generated from their sphere, and a third should be generated from their prospecting efforts, giving them the net total three de deals per month and 36 deals in a year. But if they've been on our team for a year or more, and we've tracked all of their analytics, and let's say over 50% of their deals came from their sphere, 25% internet, 25% outbound lead generation, then we're going to make sure that we cater those goals of how they spend their time to be the things that are going to take them the least amount of time and generate the most amount of money. And so it's always looking at return on investment as well as return on time for each and every person within the organization. So then to take it a step further, let's say we have defined they want to do 36 deals. We also know that it takes around 150 opportunities or outbound calls. So they get an open house, you talk to someone and thinking about selling at a, you know, you make an outbound prospecting call, that's an opportunity. So we know it takes 150 calls to get one sale. So we take 36 times 150 calls divided by however many weeks they want to make outbound prospecting calls, call it 50 weeks. And that's how they then establish their outbound call goal that will essentially equate into their unit sale goal, which will equate into their life goal so that they can lead and live the life of their dreams. So the beautiful question to ask someone when you're holding them accountable, if they don't make their calls, they don't do the activity they've promised themselves they're going to do to hit their goal. We ask which item they'd like to have removed from their vision board. Right. So, and I know I brought that up in the past, but that's the emotional question. Cause guess what guys, I'm going to achieve my vision. I mean, I've already doing a lot of the things, but I'm going to continue to have success they have to choose within themselves to do the activities necessary. And everyone listening to this podcast needs to choose within yourself to do the activities necessary on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis to be able to leave, live and lead the life of your dreams. And then the provocative challenge I'll make to everyone listening and to my people in the room when I'm talking with my team is that if you don't believe my team, Omaha's Elite Real Estate Group, or my coaching company, Elite Real Estate Systems, or this podcast, is going to make it so that you can live and lead the life of your dreams or provide you the information and the resources and the foundation to get you there, you need to cut it out of your life. Mm -hmm. If you have things in your life right now that aren't helping you get to that vision board, cut them out of your life. It could be alcohol, pornography, um, maybe you're playing golf too much, whatever the thing might be, cut it out or reduce it. Moderation, obviously, in all things. And so that's a provocative comment to make as a team leader. Hey, if you don't see our team as the vehicle that's going to help you hit these goals this year, then go find another team or find another career. Yeah. 
Love it. Yeah, there, there's so much there. Uh, just one of the key points of just knowing where the where the bell curve essentially is. Uh, and that applies to us as leaders too, but definitely applies to how we lead people and understanding that just having the same call goal and unit goal throughout the year isn't going to get them what they want. So yeah, I think it's uh, it's phenomenal. Just the ability that you guys have to track and then and then lead that all the way down to the level of what are you going to get up in the morning and do today that's going to get you to your goals. Yep. Love it. And then you know, the other, fo the big focus on what should each person individually focus on because we're all different. I feel like so mm -hmm. often the bro brokers I hear speak, even thought leaders in the industry, they all tell everyone to do the same thing. You know, someone might just be a believer in expired calls or a believer mm -hmm. in mailers or a believer in internet leads. Whereas we are a little bit more um, intelligent in the way that we choose and help encourage each agent's individual path based on the results they had in the last 12 months. So. Yeah, there's a, there's a great quote. Uh, I, I stumbled across it in a, in a book. I think it was another one of the marketing books by Al Reese. He said, there is no such thing as a universally good strategy. It's all it. situational. Yep. I love it. Yeah, yep, it I all depends cool. on the person. Yeah. So there is no such thing as uh, just telling everybody to do the same thing unless you're building a coaching company around it. And then, <laughs> then apparently that's okay. <laughs> well, and what I teach people though too is the way that we've uh, built out Omaha's Elite and even the systems mm -hmm. and strategies that we teach and employ in our business in Omaha, we tell everyone we don't know the answers. We, mm -hmm. We're not perfect at anything, but what we have done is we become students of our trade and we are the best we know in the industry at a lot of different things, but each and every market's different. Each and every person's goals are different. And we're just there to present to them options, um, call it patterns that they could choose to try to, to test out in their own marketplace. And that's what our solution is. And that's what the podcast is all about. Yeah, and, that's, and that goes to your point about the fact that you guys are still in the trenches because the, the, whole, the whole part of expertise, like if you're paying a coach, if you're paying a mentor, look, whatever that is, consultant, you're paying for their pattern recognition. Yep. They have to be in it every day. They have to be working with other people who are running multiple different models. Otherwise, you're going to get one size fits all advice that may not work for you and you won't know it, right? So working with the right person who gets lots of different patterns exposed to them every single day, like always in the trenches with different people running different business models, like that's, that's essential because otherwise you're going to get just the one size fits all advice. Matt, I got chills as I listened to you talk about this and I thought about the future of coaching is not going to be having an individual coach. It's going to be being placed in a group that's private. It's essentially buying access to the top minds in your space, whatever that space might be. So if you're right now, even if you're not in real estate, we have a lot of people listening to this outside of residential real estate, the bird, birds of a feather flock together. They say your average net worth is an accumulation of the average of your five closest friends. Your success in whatever business you're leading and running today is the same. It's an accumulation of their top five closest people within that same business. So pick the people you want to align with and you'll essentially soar to the top. But you need to make sure the people you pick are getting their advice from somebody that's leading the pack as well. And that's I true. think that there's a challenge where people listen to the wrong advice. You got to be very studious in, in your efforts to decide whose advice do you want to take based on what they've actually achieved and whose advice are you taking because they're better at running Google ads or better at putting their face in front of you more often than anybody else. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of coaching companies and experts and uh, out there, thought leaders, who are thought leaders because they're good at running Facebook ads. <laughs> or because of putting, the person that they were yeah. born under. Yeah, I, I like mm. to use the analogy of going into battle. If you had to go to war, would you want to be trained by someone that literally was just in war yesterday? Or would you want to be trained by someone that studied war but has never stepped foot on the battlefield? There are a lot of coaches and a lot of uh, professors in this space that have never been in the trenches. They've never done it. They don't know what it feels like to not be able to pay a bill next month unless they have a commission come through, which totally changes your ability to overcome objections, the way you manage yourself, the way you manage your emotions and your stress. And that's something that we speak to with Elite Real Estate System. So a shameless plug that I always like to give, we'd love to host you at, in Omaha at our team building workshop. We have our next workshop coming up on February 25th. We're also hosting our first ever regional workshop. It's an all day event in Miami, Florida on January 16th. We have Josh Cunningham coming. He's the CEO of Rockerbox as a VIP speaker to that event. And then we'll have Kevin and Andy, our direct reports that run operations and success management. They'll be there as well. That's only 297 bucks. So you can find out all of the information about upcoming events on our website, EliteRealEstateSystems.com forward slash events. We have a lot of other fun events coming up this, uh, this spring and summer. So stay tuned for those. And then of course on iTunes, we would request, we're trying to get to 100 reviews before the end of the year. If you guys have found these episodes useful in 2008, 
and it's helped provide a lot of value to you and your business, please go out and rate us. It's simple. Just go to find our episode on iTunes, The Team Building Podcast with Jeff Cohn. Scroll down. It's like in the middle. Give us five stars and then give a shout out to maybe one of your favorite guests, to Matt for the great job he's done as our as our co-host uh, throughout this last couple of years. And just let us know the value that you've taken from the podcast so other people can choose to follow this podcast as well and it'll help change their life. That's right. Couldn't have said it better myself. Excellent. Well, I think that's, that's right. a wrap. I think so. Should we close out 2008? We're closing it out right now. <laughs> Stay tuned for our next episode. We appreciate, appreciate you guys following us and all the amazing comments and compliments and support that you've given us. Keep it, keep it up. And if there's other topics or guests that you'd like to see us mm -hmm. interview, don't hesitate to reach out. You can Facebook message me. It's just Jeff Cohn. Um, or you can email me, jeff at elitealestatesystems.com. Until next time. Thank you.